Right, let's do it live. Do it. Hi. So we're live. We're doing it live. We're doing the Bill O'Reilly <laughs> thing. It. We're doing it live. Do it live. Hi. So we're yes. live. Am, we're doing it live. Duchess. We're doing the Bill O'Reilly. Tatiana Morticia von Elfberg, better known as Mort. And with me, as always, I have my wonderful tech lackey over there. <laughs> and I... That's all I am, man. It's just a freaking tech you. monkey in the background. Hell <laughs> yeah. And then I also have the ever less than charming, but always wow. incredibly entertaining. That is incredibly rude to our guests. That's yeah. the best introduction I've ever had, actually. Oh, okay. It's an improvement for you. You're, yeah. you're moving up. All right. I'm moving up. Yesterday, they only called me a scumbag. Come on. Uh, the day before the I was a... step up from yesterday. Yeah, the day before, I was an effing scumbag. Come on. Give it up. Who's moving up know? in the world? <laughs> Sorry. But we have the Commodore, John Hi. Hi. <laughs> from the Republic of Malasia. So. Hello? How you doing? <laughs> but he's located out in Chicago, so he sounds like he's one of those those uh, ga- oh, was it Gambinos out there. You were from Chicago. This changes everything. Oh. I'll soldier on. <laughs> you soldier do. on. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, let's let's take some moments and talk about Malasia and the Commodore and Spyglass Hill. So, I am sure that. Uh, a picture of the Malassian flag, uh, which is very familiar to some people who Actually, know it's, it's part of his label. It's right there. Oh, excellent! So, cool. on- <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now you are one of the few citizens of Malassia. But okay. uh, I'm, I'm going to cut you off right there. I'm sorry to be rude, Mort. Uh, no, we please, have to please, stop please. Wait, wait. I just want to say to to you and to all future guests, please. Don't feel bad about being rude to Mort. Just, Mm-mm. just please don't, don't. Go ahead, continue. Everyone we pride ourselves on being nice, okay? <laughs> no, but <laughs> to be fair, I have to really throw this out there. Uh, everything that you're describing, my Commodore ship, uh, the citizenship, and my uh, rep- representative title that I use in Microcon, that's all strictly honorary. I, I have a lot of people hit me up a lot. And think I have all this pull and power, which I don't. I have no pull, no influence, no nothing whatsoever in the Republic of Malasia. I'm just a person that the president thinks very highly of to uh, do projects with, and I'm always honored to do them. So. Yeah, don't feel bad. People ask me all the time for the similar kinds of things. And yes, I am Minister of Foreign Affairs for the Kingdom of Ruritania, but... I couldn't even get some of my own besties uh, citizenships um, by telling my mother, please, that's that's my friend, just to prove it. Like, she was like, no. <laughs> so um, I never feel bad. Just the fact that the president thinks that highly of me. His excellency uses me a lot, and, you know, I will never let him down when he has an idea. But you went to the M- Malaysia Naval Academy. Yes, you, you passed with flying colors. I cheated. <laughs> I'm kidding. It was open <laughs> but so that means that you are the commander of the Navy. That's a yes and a no. The actual true commander is uh, President Baugh himself. He's the Grand Admiral. Uh, yeah. When you finish Spyglass Hill, you have your choice of being a captain, a commodore, or an admiral. I let His Excellency choose it, and he liked that the most, so I took it and ran with it. And so for those of our viewers who aren't aware uh, where, where Malasia is located, it is in the middle of a desert. <laughs> it, indeed, it is. It's in a town <laughs> called Dayton, Nevada. Mm-hmm. Now, remember, once you cross over there, you're no longer in the United States territory. So, you know, that, but exactly. you don't need a passport to get in, folks. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I'll, Dayton, I'll, Nevada. Is, go ahead. Go ahead. No, but my, micronational passports—they—they're—they they are nice, but very rare to come by. You know, we. Bovia has a couple of those. Ruritania does not issue them out unless you are uh, born a Ruritanian. Uh, otherwise, we we don't have um, citizen requested uh, passports. But go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, if anyone that's really looking for the Republic of Malasia, it's right outside of Carson City, about a 20-minute drive in Dayton. 
Uh, you'll be going through a lot of twisty turnsies before you actually find it. But Yo, trust did, me you when say, I... did you say twisty turnsies? Yeah, twisty I said twisty turnsies. Oh, you, you know, twisty turnsies. That's the way you say that. I, you know, <laughs> mad respect on you for that. You're, you're making me want a margarita over here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, now because you you had found out about uh, Malasia, I am guessing that it was during the war, the Great War of. Uh, Molassia versus the Caucasians. Is that not right? Indeed, it was. It, it was a, very much a coincidence. We had just seen the movie Caucasia. Uh, my wife and I just on just on a whim decided to join the Facebook page, and we hit it off instantly with His Excellency and the First Lady. So uh, you I know, we love were, Adrian so much. Who doesn't? She is such a delight. I'm, She's, as, I'm assuming Adrian is the First Lady. Yeah, our yes. studio audience who may and not she be she was time. so annoyed that she wouldn't be a queen or a princess that it is required by him that she be allowed to wear a tiara, regardless that it's a republic. She gets to wear a tiara. It's, it's part a of their Republican tiara. <laughs> I think it's great. You got to put your foot down in those uh, dictatorships, you know. Somebody's wearing the pants. Republican dictatorships, (laughs) yes. What? What? So, (laughs) but uh, so you, uh, so how did you go about joining this this great and powerful micronation? An unbelievable amount of coincidences, and it just worked out so well. Uh, when we joined the Facebook group, uh, we noticed that we had something in common. I can't reveal what that is, because then everyone's going to be flooding Malasia and probably sending them all sorts of gifts from this certain thing, and I want to leave that alone. Right. But uh, we, we found that we had something in common, and while my wife and I were taking a vacation, we found something that uh, appeals to that, and we just decided, why the heck not? We took a chance, sent it out to Malasia. Within, like, two weeks, here comes this gigantic envelope full of Malasian swag, you know, just great thank you letter. Ever since then, we were hitting it off, sending emails back and forth about a visit. We eventually did. Uh, I came up with the idea with doing a uh, commission ceremony as far as being an official Commodore. And uh, the president gave me all the details, you know, everything you're seeing here. And we just, we did that. We showed up in Malasia back in 2013, and we hit it off like we were friends forever. And it's been that way ever since. Now you can't see this from where his ang- the angle of his camera is, Paul. But he- have you ever seen those pic- those pictures of the Korean generals where they're wearing fifty bajillion medals? Oh, I, I, I am one of them Korean generals. I have fifty bajillion. <laughs> I actually okay, have. Oh, I, I actually have a medal for wearing that many medals and still being able to stand upright. Mm. <laughs> Although, although that last medal knocked me over, oh. ironically. <laughs> the double cross. Right, the double cross, you know. I thought it was the double cross. So what are, what are, what are, what are those medals? Could you show those medals again and, and oh, tell yeah. us what they're for? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. The, uh, the top uh, tier there, the middle one is the very first one I ever got from Malasi. It's a Malassian Friendship Medal. Uh, the second one, which is right, this one right here, I, I earned this from Grand Duke Travis of West Antarctica. He made me a knight in the Order of the Snowflake. Wow. This guy right here. That, yeah. You're <laughs> going to have to elaborate on No, you no. Just, Go yeah, through all the medals, but come him. back to the snowflake. <laughs> Go ahead. I will eventually. This one right here is the Order of the Desert Palm. It's one I recently received from Malasia in Microcon 2017. I believe Warren was there to see that one. Uh-huh. Right underneath it is the Distinguished Micronational Service Medal from the House of Homestead, something I'm very proud of, and then just this recent one, which I was granted from Her Majesty. Now, don't hate me for this. I cannot pronounce it. This is Rotanians. This is the Knight of the Royal Curaciers or something like that. I cannot Cur- pronounce Curus, that. Cur- Cur- Curus. They're like, I don't, I don't, they're like but, the warrior dudes with with big curacers, right? But I have one even better. Like Wait, wait, no, don't get to that. No, no, no. I, I must insist what? that I hear more about the Snowflake Award. <laughs> that one, that one, that didn't trigger me. That... that that filled me with awe and wonder and joy and glee. I want to know how to get one. <laughs> this is an honor bestowed by Grand Duke Travis of West Antarctica. Uh, most people don't know that, I, that we did this. In MicroCon 2015, 
Uh, much like Her Majesty, who had the meet and greet at the Rotanian Embassy, right over there, as a matter of fact. Right here. Uh, right, right, where, right where Morty yes. is. Right. Yes. In the 2015 Microcon, we held an unofficial meet and greet at the Blue Bayou Restaurant in Disneyland. That was spearheaded by myself and my wife, who happens to be a Disney cast member. So wow. it was yes. it was amazing that when we did the invites for all that, we only had maybe like eight to nine people, and like sixteen showed up. Whoa! And we Whoa. just hit it off. That's like everyone a was there. A yeah, something mob. like that. That's a it's micro just mob. <laughs> yeah, this gigantic table of all these micro nationalists. I mean, Grand Duke Travis, King Timothy of Shiloh, uh, oh, Grand. I love, I love King Timothy. Prince Arthur and Princess Edith, uh, King Christopher from Vikesland. They they all showed up. It was it was like Microcon come early, uh, because uh, Grand Duke Travis was very much impressed by the fact that we pulled this off. He awarded me the uh, knighthood and the Order of the Snowflake. So all I have to do to get a knighthood of the Order of the Snowflake is to do something that triggers a micro mob. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm gonna I, work on this. Well, I don't think that's. Exactly it. Whatever. <laughs> but, uh, you're crushing my dreams. I'm sorry. No, I, because I will I'll, once again retreat into the background. I'll have the Grand Duke Travis on soon, and we can discuss how you can have the Order of the Snowflake if you'd it's, like. It's 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 one of the most fantastic orders I think that you could possibly have. It's like it's going to trigger so many, and it's going to bring so many others joy and glee. <laughs> I am joy and glee, by the way. <laughs> I can't even. But so, can I do my thing now? Is that all right on my show, Paul? Is that is that cool? So, I and this is the first time I've ever been able to do this because I am not queen. I'm not even heir apparent, but I am the Grand Duchess and the Minister of Foreign Affairs. But I wanted to say that and and project how wonderful. That the Commodore has been to me, to Ruritania, to helping spread micronationalism out throughout the world. And so I spoke with the Queen, and uh -oh. we are knighting you. And, oh. with, and orange is my favorite color, but this is oh, the really? Order. Yes! It's the Order of St. Tristan. Oh my and gosh. It's for specifically, and it's got a little crown as your little dangly medal, but it's for helping pro. Uh, permeate uh, micronationalism and, and what we do out in your everyday life. And yeah, I know you can cry. It's okay. Well, uh, no, really, I, I, I'm, I'm truly honored by this that you, Grand Duchess and Her Majesty, <laughs> think so highly to want me to award that. Can, can, can I see that again? Yeah. Uh, right? that's, that's pretty cool there. Let's, let's uh, see if I can. Ah! <laughs> no fair! <laughs> because then. Um, Pretty woman, but <laughs> so you got a lot Rolls of rules reversed. A lot of micronational swag, correct? From that's, Malaysia. That's my sixth one now. Wow, <laughs> I think his excellency is going to get jealous. <laughs> he, he might. Think he doesn't have that many. Oh, he has plenty more, but it seems like I'm catching up fast. <laughs> okay. But, okay. No offense, your excellency, if you're watching this. <laughs> I hope he is. Could Could you tell um, the studio audience who your excellency is? His Excellency is President Kevin Baugh, the benevolent dictator of the Republic of Malaysia. Can you pronounce his title as Reyes? Is it Reyes? Reish? Reish. Thank you. El, El Reish. El Reish. And that means president for life. Is that what that means? Yes, that does. Okay. So let's talk about your consulate that's coming soon into the great windy city of Chicago. Chicago. So, Chicago. Okay, um, thank you for letting me have a minute to speak about that. Uh, it's actually, I hate to say it, but it's actually about a half an hour southeast of Chicago. It's right across the border in Indiana. That's where I live. Um, I've noticed that we don't have too many uh, micronations, at least around Chicago, and that's always a hefty tourist trap. I mean, we have uh, Queen Carolyn of Ladonia. She lives a couple towns over, and our recent uh, friend and micronationalist, King Andrew of uh, Briarcliff. He yeah! lives in Bourbon <laughs> which is in Bourbon A, which is about a 20-minute drive from here. But, you know, let's face it. Uh, we all can't uh, afford to stay in fancy hotels and stuff like that. And my oh, wife and we're my not, wife We're not rolling in the money? Like, we don't have, like, tons of expendable income? You tell me! I mean, 
I haven't seen it, but that's what I've been told. According to the internet, we, we're just too rich with too much money on our hands. It's not like us going to thrift stores, spray paint and stuff gold all the time. You know? Not exactly. But at any rate, um, <laughs> my wife and I are just together in this house that's four bedrooms, and we've been doing a lot of remodeling with it lately, and we decided, why not? We have all these friends, and I'm sure we're going to visit Chicago one of these days. Heck, we may try to get one of the microcons out there at some point. So, for anyone that wants to have a, a place to stay that won't cost you a, an arm and a leg, uh, we have opened up our home, uh, Corsar Palace, as an inter- inter-micronational embassy for any visiting micronationalists. Yeah, and who's that first guest going to be? I don't know. Just some very, very annoying person that just decided she wanted to show up. No, nah, <laughs> I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist, Morton. I'm sorry. It's our great-grand duchess over there. <laughs> That's She's right. going to be the first guest in Corsar Palace. Uh, and we all, we're all we hoping that you guys will send out a flag that we can fly because we have a thing that we can put on the flagpole and let everyone know that you guys are here. Well, I know for certain that uh, I have I, I have been told t- today, in fact, that I have travel flags. And often I like to travel the United States, and soon I will be internationally traveling as I have to go to the Golden Bucket Ball and I have to go to the next microcon located in Toronto. Um, (laughs) So I have travel flags. So, yes, I can totally uh, have another wonderful photo up. Um, Now, I know that the next part of the show's going to have my awesome little logo that my my lackey had found that's got a squirrel with the little the, the no squirrels symbol on it because we're going to talk busters. about yeah squirrel busters because we're going to talk about one the attack on on the commodore that oh, happened no. recently because that's news and you know i know for a fact that adrian does not approve of squirrels, and she hates them as well, because she told me so after the microcon. And so what happened in that in that cutting room? Well, to anyone that's wondering, uh, when I'm not doing the micronational thing, my day job is I am a butcher. I spend a lot of days making... I make I'll spend a lot of my days making chops, steaks, and whatever you need. Now, where I work, it, there is honestly a big, gigantic hole in the wall where there's a little ventilation system. Now, we've had some certain things get in there, including some birds. And then somehow, some way, one of those little furry vermin just somehow was able to get in there, scared the holy bejeepers out of me, and next thing you know, I'm kind of missing part of that. That's just terrible. Do you see this? I approve. This is not right. I approve. Heartless. (laughs) <laughs> I'm actually thinking of starting my own micronation. Oh my god, Squirreltopia it, again. Squirreltopia, <laughs> yes, <gasps> it's going to be a place where squirrel squirrels can be free girls? To, to squirrels, girls, squirrel girls, whatever. I don't care where squirrels can be free <laughs> to be squirrels, to have a safe space, to 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 engage in. Future planning for future outreach programs to other micro nations. Future outreach programs. Outreach speaking, programs. That's speaking what of there. squirrel girl. Speaking of squirrel girl, did you realize, Paul, that one of your milts, your former milts, uh, updated Wikipedia to say that I was squirrel girl? By the way, so ladies and gentlemen, when she says one of my milts, she's referring to people who went to Milton Hershey School. I went to Milton Hershey School. And the people who went there refer to themselves as milts. So that way everybody knows what you're talking about. Because that's good radio right there. Or good TV, whatever the case might be. You're welcome. And Thank yes, you. I, I did see that and I totally approved. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> I thought it was great. I thought it was great. I thought it was great. Um, but I am very sorry for what has happened to your finger. But I do know that uh, it was brought to my attention that one of those assailants, one of those insurgents, was actually flattened very close outside your home. Right at the end of our driveway for a couple of days at least. Sorry I didn't get a picture of it more, but there was a couple pieces of squirrel pizza. Yes. So awesome. So, <laughs> what? Squirrel kill omelet, anybody? <laughs> no, out, out here in the South, we call it burgoo. 
<laughs> it's like a whole stew. That's a basic breakfast, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Sorry, I couldn't resist. I, I hate to tell you more. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Paul. I <laughs> I have eaten squirrel pot pie, and I'll let you know it is freaking delicious. I bet awesome. it is. Love squirrel you know, pot pie. People, especially the Republic of Saint Castin, they like to send me squirrel recipes, and I dig it. Like absolutely, I should have a cookbook published of all the things that you can do with squirrel meat. By the way, William Collier, uh, no relation to me, even though he's my identical twin. William Collier said, "Squirrels are your friend," and I support that. Uh-uh. And yeah. to be fair, sorry, Maura, when you come when you come to visit Corsar, it is a squirrel safe zone that they're, they're free to go through. Not when I'm there. I'll get the secret police to come with me. They'll make sure that I stay safe. So, by the way, but, uh, can I can I add that William Collier is the uh, king of Prussia? So the king of Prussia is responding to both of you right now. How you doing, Your Majesty? I I love the king of of Prussia. He is he is wonderful. Even though he's been uh, brainwashed by these terrible little squirrels, but he's a, he's all right. He's a good guy. <laughs> but um, so if we want to talk now about the squirrel news, because I understand that we are we are we doing well in time. We are at the let's see. Uh, we got about forty forty minutes or so left, so we're okay. Okay. Oh my goodness. By I the might way, have... uh, did 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 you want to talk about like his country his na- his micronation of Molossia Molossia more or did you want to go to squirrel news so I'd have a show I'm just well we can talk just... about Molossia I'm always happy to talk about Molossia do you it's, it's just that I have his website up and I have it queued and you know I, I want to make use of the work you know I... oh all that you did that and I did. I mean I was told that there was a very important appointment that you had at 8 30 Jules I, from I, Pulp Fiction. I, I have so, to buy by eight thirty. If I could get there earlier, I will. But by eight thirty at the latest. Okay. <laughs> so we'll leave it at that. Right. Are, are okay. we going to go to Molossia? Because I'm ready. Yeah. You know, let's start by talking about fun facts about Molossia, like how they set their currency. Is that one dollar? Uh, I don't know what Molossian currency. Valora. Is. Valora. What are they? Uh, they're based on the price of cookie dough. Cookie dough. How amazing is that? But it's specific, right? It's the Chips Ahoy or something like that. I want to say yes. I think it's Pillsbury. I think. So, I think you're yeah. right. I think you're right. And then uh, Chips Ahoy is already pre-cooked cookies. Whatever. I'm a celiac. I can't even. So like, um, and then they. Uh, let's talk about the Great War. You know, between them and the Kikassians. Can, can you discuss a little of that that traumatic event? Uh, well, I could tell you as much as you need, but it'll probably take the rest of the 40 minutes. Oh, we have to get to Squirrel News eventually, so... All right, well, I'll just give the whole <laughs> synopsis. So they had a, uh online critic called the Nostalgia Critic that felt like he could start taking over the world by taking out a micronation, and the one he chose was Malasia. So he got his group together, went over to Malasia, invaded. Now the president was able to, uh, you know, keep them at bay at first. Uh, first. Second time around, not so lucky. Now, I do recommend if anyone wants to see Kick Gassy, it's on YouTube. The president is absolutely hilarious. You're going to love his performance. Yes. I, uh, I how, how do you remember... spell that? Kick Gassy? Just as it sounds, pal. K-I-C-K-A-S-S-I-A. Okay, so it is. There's a movie. Uh, <laughs> Literally, what you just. I okay, yeah. I only have to pay attention to you people. Come on, man. I only pay, right. all you people look alike to me. Okay. <laughs> oh. Are <laughs> oh, you micronationalists? Look alike. So there, I, I'm actually I'm on the uh, IMDb <laughs> page for Kickassia. Uh, the Imdaba. The Imdaba. I call it the Imdaba. Yes, I'm on the Imdaba. By the way, I am listed on the IMBD. You could find me. I Paul under my uh my other name, Paul Collier. I'm listed I have a movie credit, I really do. I have a movie credit. You don't believe me. I believe What's the movie? The movie is The Undefeated. 
it's the uh, documentary that Stephen Bannon, Bannon made about Sylv- about uh, Sylvia Plath. I was going to say that's weird. Uh, about uh, Sylvia Plath? <laughs> no, no, very, very, very different. No, it's uh, uh, Sarah Palin. It was about Sarah, Sarah Palin. It's called The Undefeated. And I was uh, one of the, uh, the social media marketers for that movie. And so I got a movie credit, so I am listed in IMBD for that. My, yes. my I can twin cousins <laughs> are in many movies, actually, um, and listed because they both work in the film industry. But the queen was in a movie about FDR. So, so you're one-upping well, me is what you're doing. And it's not even you. That's, you're, you're by proxy one-upping me. I get well, it. My, uh, my sister, her royal highness, because I am her serene highness, because I have anything but There's a one-off the ship system. Right. So my my sister, her royal highness, Juliana, um, she saw Kevin Bacon and the Bacon Brothers performing at a concert. And she said that she's one degree now from Kevin Bacon because she could see the rivets in his jeans. Wow. That's yeah. pretty close. I don't want to see <laughs> Oh, that's pretty cool. oh, 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 by the way, Gigi Goforth has added, I think you know Gigi Goforth, I has do. added that squirrels must die. Yes! And Charlie Dawson has said, how about the war with the Mustachians? Must, must, Mustachians? It looks like, Commodore, it looks like you lost the Mustachian war, it looks like, just from the facial. <laughs> I wasn't a part of that. Well, first off. <laughs> We must say, hashtag, always remember, hashtag, never forget, hashtag, don't be a victim, hashtag, not even once, hashtag, death to squirrels. Hashtag, stand with squirrels. (laughs) Hashtag, too many hashtags. (laughs) Hashtag, octothorpe. Hashtag, hashtag. Yes. Hashtag, hashtag. (laughs) Are we playing (laughs) tic-tac-toe? Okay, so let's see. Uh, we got a couple more comments here. I don't know if you want to see it. William Collier said the, also the war between East Germany and Malasia. Do you know about that? Actually, I do. I actually uh, uh, bought a war bond for that. Uh, Malasia has been at war with <laughs> East Germany, which most people think is gone. But apparently but there's not. A, yeah, there's actually an island off of Cuba that has not been uh, liquidated since East Germany was gone. So it's considered still a... Uh, property of East Germany, and Malasia does not Liquidated, take kindly to that. Like a furniture retailer. Oh, <laughs> well, William. So it's an ongoing war. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, it's still going on. I don't know how many days it is. Hopefully, uh, His Excellency can uh, shed some light on that how one. How many days? Like it's a twelve-day war. Oh, it's <laughs> been a lot longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> This was the 973-day war. <laughs> Each day was getting more tiresome than the last. I honestly like, forget what the name of the island was called, but King Christopher of Iceland actually held a reconnaissance mission over there at one point. Really? Was, yeah, really cool of him. That's exciting. Could you guys describe to me, since I'm a, I'm a novice at the micronationalist stuff? What Still? Does... <laughs> okay. No, now, go ahead. Now I feel, feel, feel a little bit intimidated now. No, I, uh, I love it. I love um, talking about micronationalism. I get so excited. What does a micronational war look like? How do, how does that get conducted? <laughs> well, um, well, you go ahead, Mort. Okay. Well, there are there's a troop of kids who actually fight for this place called Constanto that is out uh, in Ohio, um, and it's an actual physical place. And they go out and they shoot like air rifles at each other and airsoft guns. It's just so awesome. And I applaud them. But otherwise, micronational wars, I think for the most part, at least the ones that Ruritania deals with, ugh, um, they are mostly just online trolls, you know. But uh, so I could no, be hot. So no drones targeting uh, innocents and wish. calling them. Wow! So you w- you didn't let me finish the sentence. No oh. drones targeting innocents and calling them uh, combatants. <laughs> so you're oh like, I God. wish, I wish Ruritania would target innocents with drones and call them combatants. <laughs> yes. No, we're a peaceful nation. <laughs> we don't we don't go to war with frivolous like dumb blondes or you know other nonsense. We I. 
I mean, I would totally be down for some water balloon fights, some paintball gun wars, but dance contests, because I got everybody, like, I won all that. Um, chess, like, whatever. But at the end of the day, like, what, are you going to come over here and usurp my mother's house? I don't think so. I don't think somebody's going to go and get Molasio away from Kevin Bob. It ain't going to happen. Been there, saw the movie, got the got the poster when I walked out. It's not happening. <laughs> like, am I, am I wrong, John? No, you're not. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I, I definitely prefer micronational wars to nation-state wars any time of the day, so. Well, we that's but you know part of that point is we've seen how other rulers are handling their countries, and we think that we can do it better. And a lot of times we do it with humor and grace, and we rock it. The silence is not allowed on a show. I didn't have any silence. That was silence just now, and I blame John. Good God. job. He should he should have seen it coming. He should have. He has the snowflake award. That tells me that he should be able to sense stuff like that and jump right in. Not that just, definition of snowflake. Oh my god. There's you multiple meanings Paul. to that. I, I, I'm not triggered. I'm concerned. I'm concerned. I'm concerned actually. I hate silence. I'm like I have a Wait. silence phobia. Okay. I sleep Isn't that with right? head, I sleep with head, headphones on. Okay? And and usually I'm playing like some long lecture that I know will make me fall asleep. So it's all been there. Can we talk right. about can we talk about the amazing, awesome news that I found that has actually occurred in the last week? Tell me which story you went up first. Um, I want to talk about based on timelines, how about a thousand years ago, a squirrel. Gave a woman leprosy. Okay. I find this amazing. Because one, leprosy is probably my favorite disease. And, and I have it up there. How a squirrel may have infected a medieval woman with leprosy. Now, this to, story to, is a lie. That story is not a lie. And it's a Viking squirrel, by the way. And also... Leprosy is only communicable to about 5% of the world's population today. So people can still get it. And there still are those, like, leper colonies or whatever. But I think it's great. I watch every show that I can about it. I, don't, I know it's going to be weird. But I said in my presentation that squirrels spread disease. And leprosy wasn't on that list. But I'm going to have to re-edit my presentation for the next microcon. I want to know what the Commodore feels about this sudden <laughs> tragic news. How in the world someone can have leprosy as their favorite disease is beyond me. It's a little weird. <laughs> a little weird. Yes. What well, was I weird. supposed to choose? Chicken pox? Oh, I really dig that polio. Like, no, leprosy is so much better. <laughs> and what's know? wrong with influenza? No, oh, God. No. All the world has a favorite disease. <laughs> I want to make the case for AIDS. What? 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 Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> Too soon. So, Syphilis, see? would that be better? I don't know. There are kids watching this. Are show. there? Welcome to the show, kids. <laughs> Hopefully you have We're gonna learn yeah. all about the season. <laughs> Hopefully your parents signed a consent form ahead of time. Otherwise, I didn't consent to the minions. You didn't I consent to. You didn't consent to gonorrhea <laughs> being mentioned on your show. Well, there goes my new knighthood. <laughs> you didn't get I, I don't know. I I mean, I'm just gonna say. Uh, I mean, I think that uh, I think you can recover from some of the venereal diseases. A lot better than you can leprosy. So I'm just going to say I'm pushing for them over leprosy. I'm going to go out there and say that. You're pushing for the clap? Well, you know what? Me? Whatever. Yes. You know what? I thought the advice was to avoid the clap. For the clap. <laughs> well, I got penicillin in the back, so it's all good. I bet We're going to have World Leprosy Awareness Month. <laughs> right. <laughs> so another another great 
article that I, I or a piece of news that I had just come across that was also in my presentation was that a squirrel caused oh, a power, power outage. Oh, let me get to it. Let me get let me, let me. squirrel blame for Louisville. There it is. It's going to come up here. Come on. Squirrel now, blame for Louisville power outage. Now, I was, I, I had a data charts and everything with information about how they cause over 23% of the countries, uh, the country being the United States of America, power outages. Now, 23%. And this just came into the news, and I am stoked because I am vindicated. You want me to read the story or are you going to read it? I can't look at it in front of me. Cause oh, like okay. More than 3,600 American electric power customers lost electricity for just over an hour Wednesday afternoon. A squirrel is to blame for the lies for the power outage in the Louisville area Wednesday afternoon. An American electric power spokesman said 33,682 customers lost electricity around 1.40 p.m. This That affected many downtown businesses and some school buildings. Electricity was restored around 3 p.m., the spokeswoman said. This this article was written by Kathy Van Elfberg. It's entirely lies. It's Vaughn. 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 Not, and not you can Dutch. guess that the squirrel was made into 55,000 little pieces after chewing on that fire. Boom. <laughs> he gave his life to <laughs> liberty. I don't want to call that liberty, pal. <laughs> not liberty for him. <laughs> that's to tell that's to tell the people that live in the area move out from under the power lines. <laughs> so already, these are two stories that I found incredibly vindicating. That they just so happen to happen at, at this exact week for me to be able to do the show. Pretty pretty touching. I'm. I'm it curious. is. It is. And so and then um, there was the squirrel population is plummeting. In the oh, state of Arizona. Oh, well, let me get let me get to the. Uh, this is this is bad news. This is not good. This is. What they do? Use up all the squirrel Viagra. Very, very very concerned about this. Estimated population of squirrels plummets after Arizona wildfire. So you are cheering on the 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 ashing of Arizona squirrels. Well, first off, let me just say what the are the members? Squirrel, the great squirrel ashing. The great squirrel ashening. The yes. world's biggest squirrel flambe. Yes. So recently, one of our members of the Secret Police, Kurt Boda, actually moved out to Arizona. And so recent, in fact, that I don't think that he's been out there longer than maybe two months. And already mm -hmm. he's gotten down the squirrel population for, I believe, the red squirrels to... Was it fourteen percent? There's only thirty-five out of the three hundred. An endangered squirrel species estimated population has plummeted since a major wildfire burned much of its habitat atop southeastern Arizona mountain, a uh, southeastern Arizona mountain last summer. An annual multi-agency survey of the mountain gram red squirrel product produced an estimate of only 35 squirrels, which is only 14% of the 252 squirrels estimated in 2016, the Arizona Game and Fish Department said. This is murder. Murder. Quite simply murder. And thank you for that information. I shall be passing it along to the proper squirrel authorities. So, uh, how do you want to say it, Mark? Better dead than red. <laughs> hey, let's see. The only good squirrel is a dead squirrel. And, Kurt thank you for your work! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See if your cable goes out anytime soon, buddy. <laughs> A little scratching on the side of your house when you're sleeping at night. Now, um, I don't know if you're aware of this, John, but yes. my my lackey, he actually has multiple shows. So that's is that right? right? I do. This is only one of this is one of his shows. Well, I mean, it's my show, and he's just kind of there. I'm the monkey but, in this show. Did someone yeah. throw a banana yet? <laughs> <laughs> so, but. He actually covered this show, this this part of it on his show. Um, well, actually, it's on my site, but I didn't oh, cover it in one of my shows. It's only on one of, on my site. Oh, excuse me. Basic definition: cheap gratuitous plug. That right. is the cheap gratuitous plug. 
of, uh, and actually, I love this. That was story. the worst German accent I've ever heard in my entire life. I, I wasn't doing a German accent. I was trying to. Well, you like weren't a, doing anything I throwing, else. I was doing what? a micro. What kind of accent were you using? I was doing a <laughs> micro nationalist accent. <laughs> a micro. Ah! Is there such a thing? Micro, yeah, so. micro Yes, uh, micro national. Uh, it does sound like these. That's it. I've never met a single micro nationalist. It's that... all. It's it's not what you say on the outside. It's it's what is is the inner voice in your head that I oh. always hear. This is how you guys talk to one another. So your inner voice is a Wiener Schnitzel? Pretty <laughs> much. Yes. You have a you have a, a Wiener conscience. Uh, yes. But but, but can, can, can I share this story and then you can tear it apart? And I think why not? Glorious. I think it's a glorious story. I think so too. Oh no, it's 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 uh it's it's glorious. <laughs> uh, the, the 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 first part of the story is glorious. The second part is not at all. Woman points empty pellet gun at squirrel, gets arrested. A squirrel gets an empty pellet gun pointed at it, and a woman gets charged as a result. This incident happened in Longmont, Colorado this past Friday, October 13th. October 13th, okay? That was a Friday. Yes, Friday the 13th. Good day to get a squirrel. Apparently, a woman had enough of a squirrel seeming to menace her outside a local coffee shop, so she pulled out her pellet gun that had no ammo in it. That was her only mistake. And pointed it at the squirrel. The question here is, what made the woman think a squirrel would be afraid of a pellet gun? Seriously. So, so the police were called. And uh, according to witnesses, Kylie Morrison, 31, who police said appeared to be high on something. No, she was she was righteously no angry. Uh, she yeah. was righteously uh, uh, angry. Uh, uh. Righteously angry. Was talking. She had to... every right. That's to right. Point that empty pellet gun, and I wish that it was loaded. That woman is a hero and should have never been treated like that. But then I the was just came... about to ask you, Mort. Jesus lies. The police she came and and seized her up, man. Seized her up. Came to the rescue of the squirrel, and the woman was righteously put in her place. And now she's been convicted, and she'll be serving three life terms. Uh, if I may ask, Mort, what is Rotini's official position on this matter? We find her to be a hero. There she is, by the way. I have a picture of her up, so you can see her there. She's... Nobody has a good mugshot. Trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, she's awesome. She's great. Well, yeah. I, I, but the, the police response is even better. And you know me, I, I don't generally root the police on, but, you know, she, I, I got to say. The gun wasn't loaded. It's the damn say. squirrel. She, she was framed. She, <laughs> they had it out for this woman. She is oh, a hero. Yes, I, I, I love this story. I love the ending. It's a beautiful thing. And uh, Take it to the court. The plane did a rocket J squirrel. You know what? <laughs> Never let it be said that I didn't stand up and clap for the police. You're not standing up. Or are you? They can't see you, me. Wait, I, you gave the police the clap? Oh! Oh, nice! I, yeah! I got to give you that one. I got to concede <laughs> that point and... I got I got to back away from the show. At and to all moment. police officers, it was just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> or was it? Right. Okay. Yes, it was. I prefer to stay right here if you don't mind. <laughs> so, um, I'm not sure, but I think I think we're out of all this content so, we're, for well, today. We, we got about 10, 15 minutes left if you have more stuff to say. Otherwise, yeah, we can wrap it up. Well, we nailed this. Do you, do you, Commodore, do you have anything exciting to share with our studio audience that will will launch Malasia into the 21st century, uh, finally coming over to the side of the squirrels? I would like to. Uh, no. I, I can't. Malasia I don't has any... a stance against the squirrels I know personally from Adrian Baugh. And I, like I've already explained at the beginning of this show, I have no pull, power, influence. I have no idea. That's all up to His Excellency. We will hopefully have a statement on that, but that, I, I can't provide anything about that. Uh, what I would like to provide, though, is uh, a little bit of advice to anyone that is listening out there that would love to be a part of an established micronation, if that would be all right. Yes, please do. Oh, yeah, that was part of the show that we never got to. Mm. Well, that's all right. Uh, we just, have time. We can get to it now. We're getting to it yeah. now. I promise I won't take 10 minutes. It's just three little points of advice. 
just coming from me as someone that has joined four of the most recognizable ones out there, including yours, I believe, Mort. <laughs> Point number one, uh, I get a lot of people that ask me this and how they can become one. And, and first point is just reach out to whichever micronation you want it to be. What I've noticed from most of the uh, micronational leaders out there is that they will respond very quickly and are very personable as well. Her Majesty was definitely one. Mm -hmm. And His Excellency definitely, as I've already explained earlier in the show. Just, you know, like I said, just be yourself, be courteous. That's point number two. You would not walk up to Queen Elizabeth in England, put your arm around her and go, hey, Liz, we're shaking. Yeah, I mean, I personally would give her a windmill high five because I always top gun that, you know, but that's just me. (laughs) I'm sure you have the... (laughs) I'm sure you have the privilege to do that anyway. Of course. (laughs) But the second is, if you do visit and you meet the leaders, always be courteous. Uh, I've seen a lot of them, they'll walk up to them and say, by the way, I'm going to take you over. That's about to get you as far as the door. And I mean outside. (laughs) I would never recommend anyone ever say that. If you're, if you're really willing to be a part of it, just like I said, just you know, be courteous, be friendly, and just be yourself. You, you, don't have to, you don't have to be any more than who you are. Point number three, and if I could give any advice to anybody that really wants to earn their place in this, it's just these simple words. Goodwill breeds its own reward. Like these here, I didn't buy these. I earned them all. And that one too. Oh, uh, is it? Is it there again? Uh, yeah. Let's see if I can get it. It's like, it's like, oh God! Again! Again! Really? I did. Sheesh. Sorry. Sheesh. Wow. Sorry. See how mean she is to me, and I, I'm supposed to be the guest. You didn't even wear your hat. Okay, fine. I'm wearing for the last couple of minutes. There, there fine. There, there's, there, there's Captain Crunch. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, uh, point number three, (laughs) goodwill breeds its own reward. Uh, When we did the project with His Excellency, uh, we just kept in contact, and we were just going to the nth degree on everything he wanted to do. And when I got there, you know, I received the first medal. I uh, put out my services, and I spent 13 hours in that very embassy right over there with uh, Morton, Her Majesty, uh, just making sure things went the way they needed to go. And much like the medal there that I just received, again, thank you. And the other one that I'm wearing, it, it wasn't bought, it was earned. And you'll find that when you earn them, you'll have a much higher standing and a better position to be a part of whichever nation you're wanting to be a part of. So there you go. If, if you could take anything from that, there's my three points of being a successful follower, or in this case, a tech monkey. You know, and, and <laughs> as at, like also, like you mentioned, um, you know, our time together here at the embassy. Uh, with your with your lovely tiny petite wife, um, Lady Katie, um, who lives in the windy city and could be blown away in a very light breeze, um, she, y'all, uh, you know, I find it fascinating of how great you can develop friendships with these other micronationalists. Um, like we have a very very tight knit community here in the microsphere, and it's. You know, it's just so beautiful to me how how understanding and compassionate and and relatable we are, even though we're all very very different. Uh, very very different. I mean, and big shout out to Duke Wolf. I wanted to mention that. Yeah, I love my Duke Wolf. <laughs> Absolutely, I have the coolest cousin in the world. So so I have a, <laughs> a, a comment which I missed earlier. I wish I would have gotten it. It's a little bit more relevant later, earlier, but I still want to share. It. It's by my friend Tyanong. Tyagananda Swaraj. That's right, Ty. I said your name right. Uh, He says, I think something really interesting. He says, have you guys thought about putting your micronations on the blockchain? You can do it through BitNation or also called BitNation Pangea. Do you know anything about that? I've never heard of this. And that's not a question for me to answer. That Everything (laughs) is always left up to President Ball. But do do you know about it? I, I can't say that I do either. I don't know what I it really is. Can't. I would like to know, and I can speak to the queen about it. Yeah, but... you guys should look it up. Bitch. I'm thinking of starting a Squirreltopia on that. Is this, wait, is this like a second life? Because we don't do that. Is that what that is? Uh, no, it's not second life. 
Well, I said like a second life. I didn't it's, say it's it not, was. It's like, not second life. It's not like a second life. It's nothing. It's like. not an RPG because we what what micronationalism is isn't an RPG. We aren't LARPing. We aren't pretending. You we're know, not and, cosplaying. We're not cosplaying. I know last week I was or last episode I was wearing a toga because why not? Um, but no, like, like this is this is our lives. When I when I meet new people, I one of the first things I tell them is that I'm a it's, grand duchess. It's it's actually it's a digital currency. You can create your own digital currencies on there. Your own micronational digital currencies. Interesting. Oh, we do have the Cronin. Uh, Bill, Bill, uh, the 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 Prussian king. Uh, what what is his full title? Wilhelm Weidenhof. I don't know what it is. What's your official title there, Bill? Uh, he's actually going to be <laughs> doing for Upadaria. That's his other micronation. He has. Uh, uh, he's a going party to do the Upo on that. <laughs> no, it's Upadaria. Upadaria. It means UPDR, Unity University, Popular Sovereignty, Democratic Equality, Rule of Law. Let's get it down. He mispronounces, or he mispronounces Molossia as often as I mispronounce Upadaria. Did I say it right that uh, time? Uh, BitNation is also a place <laughs> to keep things on record on the blockchain. So all of your documents, your history, all of that could be put on the blockchain and preserved. Oh, okay. I don't know what a blockchain is. Well, a, blockchain, a blockchain is essentially... It's a, it's a, is this you know what it is? A it's dark a dark web. It's, it's a, no, <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, you know, you've heard of Bitcoin, right? Yes. Bitcoin operates using a blockchain. Blockchain is in essence, it's a database that is decentralized that you can't, it, it, there's, there's all, all of it is contained everywhere. And yet you, it not, not the whole of it is, is not contained. In one oh, so it's one of these servers is probably being hosted inside of sea land is what it sounds like to me. Now it's, 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 <laughs> it's the blockchain. There is no central hub in a blockchain. Mm -hmm. You're telling that to a DBA. Okay. I'm, I'm telling that to a DBA <laughs> who just told me she's never heard of blockchain. I don't know what a blockchain is. So, You're saying yeah. terms that I don't get. So yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not in the database world that you're operating in. It's a totally but, different reality. But Sealand does rent out server space. Personally, because I want to be a conspiracy theorist, I think that their servers are being rented out to anonymous because they are out in international waters. An they are anonymous, there is no such thing as anonymous. What are they called now? It, it, they, they were never, it was just like individuals who decided to call themselves, I'm part of anonymous. What's that mean? There, it was a decentral. You know what? Anonymous is like the blockchain too, because there's no centralization. There's like, like you know, the the Black Lives Matter. Everybody thinks Black Lives Matters is some. Oh my some, gosh. Some you know unified hub with a central authority, <laughs> and it's not that. There's so many people that are part. You know that say they're part of Black Lives Matter, and there's a lot of differences in those groups, Paul. and there's no centralization. Paul, you you are you are jumping off of. You you are going into your anarchist show, away from my cronat, <laughs> away hey, from my microsphere. But, but this is actually I'm running my news. Cheap for two of this plug. No, it was it, it was absolutely relevant. It was a good question by Ty. It's an excellent question, and I'm going to research not only the term blockchain, but this this bit, uh, whatever coin frontage. I don't remember what it was called. Bitcoin? Well, we You've not heard of Bitcoin? No, 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 no. I know what a Bitcoin is. But on the Bit Pangea thing. Oh, I wanna... right, right. Yes, yes. It's, That's good what I wanna... it's good stuff. Good stuff to look up. I will. And I think your friend Ty Ch Shavashia. Ty Agananda. Ty Agananda. Ty Agananda. You can just call him Ty. He just goes by Ty. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> Um, hey, hey, Mort, uh, we got we got a pitch idea for uh, Morton Port. Oh, yeah. Oh, what, what is Morton Port? So, uh, my first guest, the beautiful and lovely Portia Leanne, um, John was so smart to think that she and I should have a show kind of regularly called Morton Port. What did you think of that? Good. Good. But. 
<laughs> I think it would be best if it was done on, let's say, an internet radio station that might be coming out soon. Do we know any? I'm working hmm. on one. You are? Tell us more. Is that right? It's, it's called Is Radio at isradio.net. And it will be, well, it'll be like there'll be some anarchists, some libertarians, some conservatives, some maybe um, possibly some micronationalists. Yay! It'll be, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> initially it'll just be, alter- I'm calling it alternative talk. But in, in eventually it'll segue so it'll be alternative talk and alternative music. I like oh, I music. dig alternative music. Yeah. I lived through those eras. There, it's still going on. Alternative music still still alive. Uh, and uh, by the way, if the if, if, the if, if if you want to know more about alternative music, just go to iState.tv and and click on on the link that says PG's Top 100. I keep a Top 100 listing of my favorite songs. A weekly yes. Top 100 listing. Like like Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran has been on the list but never got very high and only for one song and uh that was castle on the hill none of the others uh-huh Sorry. uh-huh no you don't none like the, the galway others. girl song you gotta listen to the galway oh, girl the galway girl okay the galway girl was the top 100 nominee it it floated around like 110 120 never made it so that was it nope no go away, girl on PG's top one hundred. My number but, one song this week is from Tennis, the group Tennis. Never heard of it. Have you? I've never heard, no, I have not I, heard. I, of you it. know, you know, I'm going to have to start tagging you, Kathy, when I share my uh, uh, when I share my. Did you just call me Kathy? I, Did yeah. you just call me by my government name? <laughs> I called you by your government name. I apologize for that. Shut it down. <laughs> I, I apologize for that more, but I I do. I'll, I'll You're gonna that. be pelted with water balloons, pal. But but oh those are th- those are the types of songs that would be on the radio sh- station eventually. I'm it's I'm I'm uh, I'm basically I'm trying to work out a monetization model that will allow me to pay for the rights to play these songs. But it, it, until I get to that point, it'll just be talk. So uh, uh, okay. more you may have maybe one or two shows a week. I don't know. Maybe there'll be a version of this show on every week. This will be a totally it. audio, whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, people like see a, see him a face, but I mean, I could I could definitely I would be happy to have a little weekly summit radio show with with some very popular guests who might be funnier than you're, you're than the most. In, you're pointing in the wrong direction. Uh, over here. Yeah, he's over there. <laughs> <laughs> you pointed to, to the to nothing. <laughs> it's like I, there. I don't know. Is there right. somebody over there in the other room? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um yeah, that would be fun. And so I totally support is state radio.net. I, is radio.net. Just is, is radio.net, which is part of iState.tv. Yes. Yeah, is radio.net. I dig it. I'm down. Cuz I'm down <laughs> and I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> I love that song. So do I. That was on my top. I think I it, like maybe I think it reached as high as like number twenty on my list. It's a great. Uh, that's a great song. It's great. Anyway. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. And then next, my next month's episode, um, which should be in the month of November because that's when they're supposed to be, um, yep. will be uh, from the Dewaco Estate. Or is it Dewaco? It's one of the two. But it's from the uh, it's Dwayne from the Dewaco Estates, and he controls many of our microspherian uh, news sites and stuff. And so he'll be a, a great addition to my history of uh, my library of very powerful and fun uh, guests, esteemed guests. I look forward to that. Well, I better look forward to that since I'll be you better. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep it going, monkey. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If I could find a monkey outfit, I'll get one. There's that. They are at Walmart. I must find one that meets my high standards, though. Okay. I mean, I may be what, a monkey. baboon? I'm a monkey. No, baboon's not a monkey, man. Is it? Is it? Are they? Are they? I don't know. I don't. They could be. I don't know. They have blue yeah, let's butt. Go 
<laughs> they big pink butts, too. Okay. At certain times of, never mind. Oh. That's kind yeah. of related to the venereal disease thing. That's what's going to happen to you. Call her by her government name again. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Somebody exactly. Somebody else is going to have a pink butt. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't, I don't want that. I don't want that. I'm, I, I'm, 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 a, I'm a good little acolyte, except when it comes to squirrels. Then I'm a rebel. Are you a rebel just for kicks, though? Oh, rebel just for kicks, though. <laughs> yeah, Portugal the Man, that song. I love that. That, that, that song Pete did about number 33 on my charts. 33? Yeah, I like it, but yeah, they picked about 33 somewhere around there. It have been higher, way higher. Found it, found it, found it. I like the video. Okay. But- I think it's more yeah. classy for you. A oh, rebel no. without a clue. <laughs> I love you know, that song. You want to know what a great video is? It's one of my favorites. In fact, at the club, when I used to walk in, you know, the my my friend who is the lead singer of the of the Dark Bloom. Uh, supposed to be writing. Is that the one that's supposed to write a theme song? Yeah, she's writing show? a specific theme song just for my show. Uh, she. When she knew that I was coming in, she would have my song ready so that as soon as I walked through the door, it played Untis Untis by the Bloodhound Gang. And if you have not seen this video, you have to see it. It's hilarious. No. I love I love the Bloodhound Gang. We got about two minutes, so I'm gonna wrap it up, close the show. Okay. Well then we can we can wrap it up and we'll say we'll say uh, au revoir and toodles, toodles to pet. the <laughs> So, um, but yes, I, I thank you so much for being on the show tonight, John. But Absolutely. I, Thanks for having me. Yes, I think you're awesome. I hope that, I, well, I'm sure that our audience dug you. And uh, much love to the, to, the, to the presidential family. Of- we probably lost a lot of viewers tonight, but it is what it is. Because <laughs> you weren't wearing the hat and the ascot. If you're really going to hold it against me on the hat, oof. Oh. <laughs> you should have had the ascot. Well, See, I wore all frills. Now, now for this show, I didn't get to promote it like I did the last show because of stuff I can't. It has to do with Facebook and what you can do now and what you can't do. So I didn't. I I I, I promoted this basically to five or six groups and a couple pages. Nowhere near what I did the last one. The last one had over a thousand listens uh, or views. But that got promoted a lot. This one, with just a limited amount of promotion, we got 200 uh, views. So that's pretty good. Okay. That's well, pretty that's awesome. good. Yeah. We'll probably that's get another awesome. two or 300 in the archive. In the archive? Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. I mean, I appreciate it. I mean, it would have been nice had we been able to get more. But it is what it is. <laughs> I know that I have a loyal audience, especially out there uh, with the MOCC. And do bust because they all sit on the front porch and they watch me every time. And I think that that's great. Yeah, and I love re- hearing. And, yeah, and remember afterwards in the archive, if you like the show, be sure you share it, man. Yeah, sure you, you share know. The show. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your mom, but your dad already knows. And everybody should be watching. Your life is music lyrics. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll see you uh, a couple weeks or thereabouts uh, for the uh, next show. Um, you want to say any, any, you know, close it out and, uh, so I can officially press the button? Um. Well, my my normal goodbye is toodles. Auf Wiedersehen. Adios. <laughs>